am here at the Florida Strawberry Festival in Plant City, where for over 85 years, this place has been serving up food, rides, games, and of course, strawberries. And if all that sounds good to you guys, then you're in for a treat. So join me as we explore the Florida Strawberry Festival. There's a lot of ways to spend your money and your time here at the Strawberry Festival. One of those ways being playing the games. There's even a chance that you might walk away with a big stuffed animal. Everyone's seen this on TV or a movie. Simply just toss a ring, land it on a bottle, and you get a prize. Looks like the easiest thing in the world, but I beg to differ. Possibly the only thing I'm good at here is balloon darts, simply because you just throw. It's all in the wrist. One of the scariest rides here at the festival is the Ring of Fire, and I'm gonna try it out first. And I didn't stop there. The festival had tons of rides to get on. All right, enough of the rides. Let's go get some food and some helpful tips. Pro food tip. If whatever you're eating at the fair is bigger than your face, then you have made a good purchase. Go. Thank you. Pro food tip number two, always get dessert. Ooh. Pro food tip number three, never overeat or you'll suffer the consequences. <laughs> Deep fried avocados. Uh, enough of this stuff. I want the strawberries. A visit to the Florida Strawberry Festival isn't complete until you have had strawberries. And nowhere else is better than here where you can build your own strawberry shortcake. If you've never been to the Florida Strawberry Festival, I highly suggest it. If not this year, then next. I'm Pedro Lugo, signing out for Ignition TV. Wow, it's real good. Hey, Pedro the Science Bro here. Science is all around us in every aspect of our daily lives. Seriously, try to think of a moment where science isn't present. I'll give you a second. Can't think of one, can you? Even walking has science to it because of gravity, momentum, energy, and you get the point. Now, let's go take a closer look at the world around us. Pedro the Science Bro. Pedro the Science Bro. bro, 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 bro. Pedro the Science Bro. Now, you can come to the time to put your goggles on. Science, it's in everything. No, I mean it's in literally everything. Even in the air we breathe. Without science, we'd be left in the dark. Hey, we turn off the lights. There we go. Yes, science is complicated, but I'm sure you all know that everything is made up of a few basic elements found on the periodic table. At least I hope you all know. But I'm curious, what do you all know about the periodic table? But how am I going to find out about this? I got it. I'll send out a few lab assistants to get the word on the street. Science. It's all about making discoveries that help explain the world around us. Discoveries that allow us to do more than we ever thought possible. Science explains why the world is round, how electricity works, and how a microwave heats up food. And that's a big one for me. You might not find the microwave to be all that incredible, but 
Not too long ago, it was a big deal. To impress you, we'll need something newer. So here's Larry and Terris with the top 10 coolest scientific innovations of the decade. So as we've learned in today's show, science is amazing. Understanding it is a process that never ends because the learning never ends. <laughs> For instance, I have to learn to never do that again. But that's the fun part about science. You never stop discovering. And once you start, you might just end up hooked on it like I am. I'm Pedro the Science Bro. I'll see you all next time. Pedro the Science Bro. This is Undercover Senior. On this episode, Pedro Lugo is one of the most successful seniors at Kathleen High School with straight A's and an uncanny attendance record. But as an upperclassman just months away from graduating, he's worried that he may have lost touch with the struggles that his classmates go through. Now he's going undercover to see if he can survive seven periods as a freshman and to learn more about current life in the ninth grade. Things have changed. Being a freshman isn't the same as it was four years ago. To go undercover as a freshman, Pedro worked to transform his appearance and try and fool the entire student body so that the freshman in his class won't really know that he is a senior. And now he's on the search for his first class. Excuse me, do you know where the class is? Get out of way, freshman. Oh. You're late, Mr. Luke, um, Kenner. Kyle Kenner. Well, being on time is the first thing you need to learn if you want to succeed in high school, Mr. Kenner. Take a seat up front. One book report per week. Make up work to me in two days, and we have a test every Friday. Um. For today's assignment, read chapters four to seven and answer each question at the end of each chapter. I didn't even remember half the stuff they were learning in there. I haven't worked this hard in years. I haven't noticed how much senioritis has affected me. Watch out, shorty. Hey, watch where you're going. What's that, freshman? I'm sorry. Don't worry, Kyle. You'll hit your growth spread eventually. You're still in the ninth grade. Yeah, any minute now. These juniors and seniors think they can do whatever they want to these freshmen. But when I go back to being a senior, something has to be done about this. Bullying is not right. As a freshman, Pedro had to face a few surprises, and the bathrooms were certainly one of them. I can hold it. All right, class, today we're gonna have a lesson on Alexander Hamilton. Now, can anybody tell me who he was? Kyle, how about you? Um, Alexander Hamilton was one of our founding fathers. He created our financial system from scratch. Ah, very good, thank you very much. He ran for president back in the 1800s. We also can't forget he was George Washington's right-hand man. His face is on the $10 bill and died in a duel with Aaron Burr. Very good, thank you, that's... That's he got shot in the ribs. Really? Could he be a senior? No, that's impossible. He's barely as tall as a freshman. How could he know all this stuff? I mean, it's not even in the curriculum. He must have came from a really good middle school. Pedro's knowledge almost gave him away. Luckily, his height kept his secret intact. And as his day as a freshman came to a close, the challenges didn't stop. No! Guess I'm walking. Today, I experienced a lot. Freshmen don't have it easy. There's a lot of hard work and a lot of fitting in. Upperclassmen like me need to be more supportive. And bullying sucks. Gotta stop doing it. And freshmen, nobody wants to use bathrooms if they're completely destroyed. But overall, this freshman class looks pretty strong. And if we all want to be successful in high school, we gotta stick together. Whether you're applying for a small company or a huge worldwide conglomerate, the most important part and possibly the most scariest part about getting the job has to be the interview. This 10 to 15 minute conversation with your future employer decides on whether you get a check at the end of every month or puts you back on the job hunt. 
Now, if you really want that job, I suggest you follow these tips to help you out with that interview. First and foremost, research the company. Visit the organization's website to get a clear understanding of what they're all about. You don't want to work for a company you don't understand. And companies don't want employees who don't care about the place they work. As you're researching the organization, be sure to compare your skills and qualifications to the job requirements. This will help you find out if you're the right person for the job. And remember, if you don't have all the skills listed, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Still, be careful to know your strengths and limitations. Dress for success might be cliche, but it's very true. You can never go wrong with a white shirt, black tie, and black pants. It's timeless. It's best to look the part you're applying for. It's important to be early, but not too early. It's good to be there at least 10 minutes before your appointed time. And remember, if you're on time, you're late. If you're early, you're on time. Once everything's all said and done, be sure to remind your interviewer why you want the job and what you can bring onto the team, and thank them for their time. Now that you know these helpful tips, go out there and show your future employer what you can bring onto the table. And remember to be respectful, punctual, professional, and most importantly, be yourself. Employers love authentic people. And who knows, maybe one day you'll be interviewing future employees. Good afternoon. Hello, my name is Pedro Lugo. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Hey TV Kids, I'm Pedro Lugo, here to teach you all about the magical world of editing. It's so cool, you can do things like this. Or how about this? <laughs> or if that isn't good enough, how about this? Hmm? What? Oh, um... Uh, that's not what I meant to do. What I meant to do was actually this. That's better. Now, editing isn't all just fun and games. It's actually pretty serious. So to get more on that, let's go see what some real advanced editors have to say. So as you can see, editing can be a lot of hard work, but can also be really, really fun. Because with just a couple clicks of the mouse, you can make any scene happy. Hey! Or maybe it could just be sad. <laughs> Don't look at me! Don't look at me! <laughs> or maybe it could just be... It's, it's scary! <laughs> oh, no. Or maybe it could just be terrifying! Don't you ever do that to me again. So just remember, next time you're watching a TV show, a movie, or anything that has to be edited, someone had to put it together. And that someone could be you. Reporting for Ignition TV, I'm... Hold on a second. Reporting for Ignition TV, I'm Pedro Lugo. Happy editing, everybody.